afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second time we're doing this. I was wearing gloves, so that means I'm allowed to wear an apron today. So what we're going to be talking about today is one of my most favorite ab mixtures in the concrete industry. It became popular in the late 2000s, so somewhere between 2005 and 2008 is when it started gaining a lot of popularity. Originally de developed in 1991 in Japan, um, and then came over here to the States through, I think, uh, France or Russia or something to that effect. Anyway, it's a polycarboxylate style high range water reducer. And there are a bunch of companies out there. What is it? Blue, green, yellow, and red. I don't like to say their names. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have my favorites and I'm holding some of my two of them I love, one of them I'm not really keen about, but that being said, they're awesome technologies that have really changed the industry, sorry, really changed the industry and helped shape what new concrete is. So the first thing that I'd like to do is define what a high range water reducer is. And a high range water reducer, an HRWR, is uh, an admixture that's governed by ASTMC 494, just like most other admixtures where the admixture is supposed to give you a certain or the same flowability but with 35 down to maybe like 20 percent less water as a reference mixture. So let's say if you have a five inch slump you could take out 25 to 35 percent of your water uh, and still keep that five inch slump where the older mid ranges and normals you can only take out 10 to 25 percent and normally when you went that high you had or high of a dosage to create that much water reduction, you had some uh, either accelerating effects of the concrete, changes in time of set, or, or some stabilization of the hydration process and delaying of time of set. So these were created to give you a, a greater capacity for water reduction and they're very easy to use. Now that being said, when we first started using them, especially in the ReadyMix operations, we were just learning about the importance of sequencing. Now, year, uh, was it last year I did a video on sequencing of high range water reducers and I think we should include that in the comments below. The high range water reducer is different from the mid range and the normals. They're going to be sequenced with your head water. They're going to go on the front end of your mix. High range water reducer, you actually want um, all your cement particles to be saturated before the high range water reducer goes into the mix. So you're going to make this in at the tail end of mixing after most if not all of your water is going to be mixed up in your cementitious in the mixer. Um, now that kind of begs on well why are they different uh, or I guess first of all what is a polycarboxylate? So what does a polycarboxylate do? Now if you look at it um, the, the shape of most of these high range water reducers or the, the backbone of it has a cone structure to it and that's why they're called polycarboxylate cone polymers. Now there's different types, there's some star shaped ones but the most uh, widely used version of it is basically looks like a cone. It has a backbone to it with a bunch of teeth sticking off and there are smaller teeth sitting on the other side of the backbone and what these polycarboxylates do normally when you take all your cement, throw it in a bucket of water the cement is going to agglomerate around this pocket of water and we're not really getting saturation of this, all the cement because the uh, uh, electrical potential forces an attraction between the cement particles to engulf or envelope that water. What a mid-range water reducer does is it changes the electro potential of that water to make those flocculates break up so that water can be touching all cement and we have more fluidity. What a polycarboxylate does is it actually attacks or adsorbs to the particle or the surface, excuse me, of our cement particle. So the small teeth on the back side of the backbone will adsorb to the surface and those other teeth, the longer teeth are of, of the cone, they're going to be sitting uh, pushing out or facing out of the cement particle. Basically what they're going to do is uh, repel other adjacent polycarboxylates that are adsorbed onto adjacent cement particles and it goes through something called um, steric repulsion where if you can imagine all these arms and combs are just basically pushing off of each other and they're transferring that force to the cement particle. 
Now, an amazing technology, and with that, we've been able to create something called the self-consolidating concrete, which is a concrete which consolidates under its own weight due to the force of gravity. And with mid-ranges, so uh, the difference between the two is that with high range water reducers, we've been able to create high performance and ultra high performance concretes, either getting to extremely low water cementitious ratios while still maintaining uh, consolidation and packing and the density of the concrete that we want to creating highly flowable grounds of concretes uh, that don't require any mechanical means of consolidation and can be used in very unusual and awesome shapes. Um, and, and, and a lot of different other uses. So uh, that's basically it that what we wanted to go over today. Uh, we've got three products that we'll do some close-ups on. Um, and this is not an endorsement for any of those products out there. There are some great companies that make great uh, high-range water reducers. I did want to comment on something. What we did find out uh, about 2004 to 2007 time frame is that there is a um, there's a dependency on the efficacy of your polycarboxylate uh, on the cementitious or with the cementitious package based on the chemistry of that cementitious package. So if you have a, a smaller backbone and the cement chemistry actually has a very high sulfate or alkali content, you might not get the proper adsorption of the polycarboxylate onto that cement particle surface. So that transfer of energy um, won't be as efficient and you'll end up needing more than um, what uh, you would normally need for a polycarboxylate with a, a different sulfate and alkali content. We actually wrote a paper on that. Uh, it's, I believe, called the Advancement of Smart Polycarboxylate Cone Polymers for Concrete and we'll include that link below. So thanks again for your time. Thanks again for listening. If you have any questions or comments, throw them below. Go Concrete, beat asphalt.